of the garden. Uh, we have a park bench, cement park bench at the end, either end of the garden so that you'd have a place to sit and look. Um, you can sit on either side so you can look out or look at the garden. But this is the one end. We have an annual Black Eyed Susan vine that we put in. It's doing quite well. We've put a new dawn rose, which has already reached the top of the trellis. In, and it's also growing out the front of the lattice of the fence. Excuse our fence, it needs a power washing. We have a hydrangea, hydrangea tough stuff. These are pansies, still blooming. This week might take them out though, although it has been a hot June. In here, we have a wygelia. We have phlox, tall phlox. We have lilies that are just about to bloom right here. We have two arborvitaes. We have boxwood, which are green mountain. And we're gonna turn that into a very low hedge and keep that trimmed. We have a pot here. It's an evergreen and we have some sedums, bukara, a hosta. I'm going, it does, it's wooly. It needs a trimming. I have to do that. Uh, there's been a lot of projects going on. This is a quick fire hydrangea, full size. This is, oh, this is a proven winners. Oh, let me, let me think. It'll come to me. Um, Invincible Red. Invincible Red. We have an evergreen here. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I'll have to look that up. Sorry about that. There's an azalea back there. And we have the azaleas that were in this garden. That was the only plant that was in the garden. You can see we've tucked them in all along and back and they bloomed beautiful. There's a mountain laurel. This is another tough stuff. Proven winners tough stuff hydrangea. We have pansies, iris. They were my mother-in-law's iris, um, so it was very important to save them. These are all the flowers I grew from seed, and we have Gallardia, which is blanket flower here, doing really well. I grew them from seed last year. I kept them in four-inch pots all through the winter. They just stayed outside, none of them froze, came back stronger than ever, and they're very prolific. And I absolutely love their seed heads as they form. I think they're really neat, but it's very satisfying to have your seeds really take to your garden. Columbine, which did get some kind of leaf miner damage on it, seems to be recovering now. Daisies. I'm not exactly sure which plant this was. Um, I guess I should have recorded it. I'm sorry. Here are more daisies, all grown from seed. All these front plants were grown from seed along here. I just cut them back. I'm sorry, I didn't get a picture or a video of them before I cut them all back. In here, this entire area was filled with the common daylily, the common orange daylily. We just cut it back, it will come back strong. Tough stuff, hydrangea, some moonbeam coreopsis, stellador daylily, impatient. Blocks, green mountain hydrangea, scotch moss in the pot, doing really well. I've been putting it between my rocks. This is a Let's Stand Steva, proven winners also. We're calling this the hydrangea garden because we have so many hydrangeas in it. In the back, we have two Monrovia phantom hydrangeas which are just coming into bloom now. This is the center of the garden right here. And we purchased a fountain that um, the bottom two pieces do not match. So we just put the mountain laurel on the side and we put one piece in the back and one piece in the front. And the top piece is all the same um, from the same fountain. 
and then we made it into a planner and we got it very inexpensively and we have a various um, perennial plants in it lamian juniper impatient alyssum white alyssum hookara or coral bells whichever you prefer to call them phlox everything in here is doing really well we have pansies still going strong in there even though it's july they're doing well this year so i haven't really cut many of them back and you'll see we have we flanked it with two mountain laurels on either side which will fill in and take over the basically around the entire fountain this garden is only two months old so you can see the two let's dance divas on either side hydrangeas and then there'll be a smaller a small hedge eventually which they are growing really fast and they are green mountain boxes also boxwoods sorry call them box <laughs> um over here we have tough stuff hydrangea proven winners all of these hydrangeas are blooming quite well even though they got hit by after we put them in they were hit by three frosts and a freeze uh, we really got a cold may we weren't expecting it we did come out with curtains and try to cover it but we did our best but you we did have some freeze damage but they're blooming awesome all of them even the phantoms in the back they're doing well we, we expect them to fill in we put three arborvitaes in the back cypress are short-lived so we're trying to get an evergreen um, hedge going that will replace them as they you know potentially die off it's also getting very shaded back there in the back we also have common day lily that we cut back you can kind of see their stalks we didn't cut them as low so you can see their stalks back there then the phlox that's always been here this is one of the plants also along with the azalea that we we kept with oh i'm sorry we did also keep the day lilies uh, we are backing them off and thinning them out though because they take over our astilbia is just coming out of bloom. That was also here. I'm sorry, I forgot. Sorry about my finger there. Another mountain laurel. Down here we mimicked the other end and we put an invincible red for some color. We have our boxwoods along here. Same thing, small hedge behind each bench. Quick, another quick fire, proven winners. Arbor Vaidi, and then we have some Russian sage, which really got hit with the storm, Tropical Storm Fay, and we have another pot, same kind of combination, an evergreen with some hosta, purple palace, hookara, and, and a fern that's just now get coming back to life because that was also took it hard in the freeze. They go right into the ground, but then they just come right back up because they're hardy. So this is it. This is what we, we put in. Sorry if it's really sunny out right now. Um, that beautiful day after a wicked storm. We lined everything with the, the Pennsylvania field stone which we absolutely love and have all over the property. And I really think it turned out really beautiful. I'm super happy with it. And I was very happy to get those daylilies cut back. They were huge and all the flowers and it just looks neater and buttoned up and just much more tidy. And that's it. That's basically what we decided to do with this and it does feel like a park which is amazing oh i forgot to show you our really cute bird bath the birds use it constantly so it's really nice and slowly but surely we'll we'll fill in but most of these plants are going to to fill any of the gaps that you're seeing the phantoms can get quite big and we're, we really gave everything room to spread to its full potential. Oh, of course, we have the fountain cherry. And then we have a large oak above the entire garden.
We try to save every tree that we can. And in the other video, when we were starting this garden, we, we showed you how we amend our soil and that's why the plants grow so fast for us and they're very lush. So that's it. That's what we decided to do with this garden and we're really thrilled with it. Thanks for joining us and I hope you like it. All right, so we're out with the latest project. Ray is currently making up soil amendments with one part peat, one part garden soil, and a half part of compost. And he's just getting that all good and mixed, and he's gonna mix it in around the plants as they're planted. 